together. As we are pressing this man of God, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Prophet Malcolm of Royce Ewers. everybody. Lift your hands up to the boss. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just pray in the Holy Ghost just for a moment. The presence of the Lord is falling here right now. It's happening right now. <laughs> it's like every time I walk to a pulpit, the, 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 the glory of God begins to just fall. It's amazing. It's a phenomenon. I'm so ever grateful to the Lord for anointing me. I want to do something for a few moments that's a bit historic. It's not something that I, I normally do. Just lift your hands for a minute. You're going to hear some amazing things. Uh, I think I need to do this more often, but I'm so busy demonstrating, you know, in the in the prophetic office that I I don't talk about what really happened, like the prophecies and their fulfillments. So this morning I had a visitation from the Lord, and we had a very long conversation, and He was showing me that I should talk about. Uh, history of this phenomenon of prophecy that God has uniquely given me for this particular place right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Clap for God and what he's doing in the nation of Kenya. Oh, yes. Woo. So, uh, it's an amazing calling that God gave me. You, you can have your blessed seats comfortably in heavenly places in Jesus' name. Amen. It's an amazing thing that God did. In the year 2000, around Independence Day, the Lord led me to, uh, uh, I was invited to come from Europe. Uh, we had a big meeting at the KICC, the Savo ballroom and I think they see about 5,000 people you know and but the place was packed completely jammed and there were thousands of people outside that couldn't get in people were around the walls and at the end of the meeting the Lord led me to go lay hands on people I think I laid hands on five or six thousand people and every single one of them fell under the power of God it, the anointing was so strong, my hands were, the inside of my hands were blood red, like fire, and they were burning for hours after the meeting. The anointing was so, so amazing. But when I walked on the platform, the most amazing thing happened. I had an open vision, and I saw the heavens open, and God began, remember this is the year 2000, okay? Someone say 2000. And, and you, know, you, know who was, you know who was the president then, yes? You know who, who, who the president was then, yes? For a very long time. And, and um, I saw the heavens open and a, and a glory began to come from heaven and began to swirl like a whirlwind all through the place. It was absolutely amazing. And then God had me begin to prophesy. Someone say danger number one. <laughs> Someone say danger number one. Yeah. And the Lord said this, he said, I want a new government in Kenya. Can you believe that? Lift your hands. Now, I was maybe not supposed to say that. You know, I came from Europe, I'd never been to Africa. The only reference I had of Africa at that time was my first time coming. The only reference I had of Africa was, uh, I met with evangelist Teresa Wairimo, do you know her? 
in uh, New York with Reinhard Bonnke back in 1994. And uh, we had a private meeting and she said to me with her blessed accent, she said, you know, Thomas, I never meet with anyone. I'm just in my hotel room praying and I order one Coke or tea and they were coming out for the meeting. That's the way she began to speak to me. And I looked at her, I said, oh, okay. So here we are sitting one-on-one -on -one in this uh, restaurant and the Lord gave me 12 things. I spoke 12 things over her ministry that had not happened and she wrote, she wrote them all down. Back in those days, we didn't have recorders, you know. She wrote them all down and every single one of them came to pass. Somebody lift your hands. I spoke about a, a, the big crowds you saw at Huru Park. I, I talked about, I saw a vision of the buildings, the offices in the buildings in town. It happened. I talked about favor with the, with the president and, and the Lord also spoke about the opposition. How many know there's always great opposition to a great mission? But lift your hands and say the devil is under our feet, hallelujah. His powers are always broken and defeated in advance. We just have to walk through the process and let God bless us. Can you say amen? And we were together just the other day in a great conference in uh, Nio Stadium. It was phenomenal. And God is really doing something right now. Lift your hands. Revival, let me promise I got, revival has broken loose in Kenya now. The new visitation has finally come in this time from last month and the month before it began. And lift your hands up right now. God's going to touch people with fire all over the land. They're going to begin to see what God is about to do. It's just absolutely amazing. Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy about God touching you? Receive the touch of heaven right now. It's coming right now. It's happening right now. So I had no reference point for this, but then of course I flew right out after, the, after that meeting. That was in 2000. And then a year later, everything began to collapse. How many remember? Hmm? in 2000 to 2001. How many were around then? How many remember what happened? And then the Lord spoke again. I was in London, England, outside of London, England, Hertfordshire, England, and God had me, he said, get your recorder, and said, he said, I wanna speak over Kenya. And I said, oh my God. And for 20 minutes I prophesied and we recorded the message and I think like a million people got that prophecy, five or six pages typed out. And the Lord said, I, 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 the election is, a new election is going to be formed and done and why Kibaki will be the president. How many remember that? Then the Lord began to say, I'm going to develop Kenya. People looked at me and said, how? How can Kenya, look at Nairobi, the city under the sun, with holes in the roads and no trees, no flowers, no big buildings and all that. But look at it now. Someone lift your hands. Look at it now. And, 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 then, and then I came back in 2004 and I had, we had big meetings at Uhuru, uh, Uhuru Park and Nayo Stadium and God began to move tremendously. Okay, now skip it up. 2007, the Lord began to speak about super highways and super expressway and the train lines and the new structures and the tourism industry exploding and all kinds of things happening and advancing. So lift your hands up to God and say, Lord, thank you for what you've done. And look now, Archbishop talks about it. He says all these things, look how they've happened. He said when, when Thomas Menton prophesied, there was nothing like that. Lift your hands. There was nothing but, and then the Lord also spoke about the chaos and the violence, the post-election violence. I prophesied that. I was in the Minister of Foreign Affairs office and told them the prophecy. And he, to he took it to President Kibaki and told them. They didn't know what to think. But sure enough, it happened. But thank God. Thank God I was here then. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. I stood on the platform one night when the, where we could finally have a meeting while all that was going on in January 2008. And, um, you know, I said, this thing will, will, will stop this week. Boom! And I put my hand down on the pulpit. That was Sunday night by Thursday it ended. Lift your hands. Do you know how many people would have died? This could have been like another mini Rwanda. But yet the Lord stopped it. 
Lift your hand. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I want you to be in intercession right now. I want you to be in intercession because I want you to catch the wave of this prophetic fire. I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of it. Because God is looking for vessels. So many things God has spoken and they've had absolutely miraculously happened. Even the things that no one could believe. I remember Kenyatta Avenue in the city. It was like a, a, a broken road. Now look at it. Paved, street lights, big buildings. Now they're changing everything around and you, you, you see the new expressway and the superhighway and you say, how, how could this have been? But sure enough, God is advancing the nation of Kenya to great heights and it's just begun. What's going to happen from now is going to be amazing. This is going to be the day of the rising of the church. The fire of God is going to come on many soldiers. Many people are going to be elected to flow in the, in the move of the Holy Ghost. And we're going to begin to see things like you've never seen. I mean, it's just going to be absolutely amazing. Do you believe, do you believe I'm a prophet? Have you seen what God has done? I prophesied the same voice that told me all those things. It's telling me also that God is about to visit this land in ways we've not seen. Economic breakthrough, all kinds of advancement, all kinds of structures and things being built, even in the lives of my people. You're gonna to begin to see the favor of heaven. Lift your hands right now and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray with me right now. Father, we thank you for what you're giving birth to. Multitudes of people are going to be touched by heaven. Multitudes in the valley of decision. I see, I see literally not thousands, but millions of souls coming into the kingdom of God. I see people that you never thought they'd get saved are going to get saved. I, I, I prophesy right now, the Lord spoke to me. I've been praying about this the last couple of days. I feel a fi God's going to raise up a fierce group of warrior evangelists that are going to go even to the hard places, even of other religions and other ethnicities, and begin to preach even at the risk of their own lives. And they won't fear their own lives because we have the victory. They're going to begin to go in the face. How can an entire group of millions of people that are in another thing get saved and then you go in their face and start telling them about Jesus and they want to threaten you and put you down and even maybe they'll even kill some maybe they'll even be some martyrs but it's okay because I prophesy there's going to be a revival even the hardest people that you never thought could get saved Jesus is going to appear to them and touch them and they're going to come into the kingdom of God we're going to begin to see it in this day when you have people trying to infiltrate and bring their things and bring their idolatry and all kinds of things into place, God says, no, 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 that's not me. Lift your hands right now. Let's all stand on our feet and pray together. Shakarate shala. The greatest wave of evangelism, you've not seen it. The greatest wave of outreach for the people to bring the power of the gospel to them, you've not seen it. I'm telling you, you've not seen it yet. You've just been in training for reigning. It's a preparation time now for what's coming. The Lord says, I'm anointing people with fire and they'll have no fear. They'll only have boldness. They won't fear men. They won't be intimidated by anyone. They're just going to begin to preach the gospel in the face of every devil and say, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And your knee is going to bow and your tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every man and every woman has only this hope, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be saved, to be delivered, to be set free. There's no other way, and there's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved, but by the name of Jesus. So don't think that there's any other way or we could just leave it alone. God's going to give the burden. I see people waking up in the night. I see people being touched by the Holy Ghost. They'll have visitations from God. They'll begin to fast and pray. They'll begin to weep and cry.
for the souls of people. And they'll say, God, how could, you, how could you have given me this burden? But the Lord says, would you rather see them lost or would you rather see them saved? God said, this is going to be the greatest day of evangelism that Kenya has ever seen. I see it going all through the land. Disciples being made, churches exploding, mega churches rising. This is going to be the day of the mega church, the day of exposure and expansion and explosions of, of growth from every side. Even this place is too small. God says, I have to get you another property. God says, how many thousands of people I want to come in here? You've not seen them yet. Uh, you have this thing set up now. And you're doing well. The Lord says, my son, you're doing very well. I'm pleased with what you've done and what you've accomplished here. You've paved the road. You've built it. But now the Lord says, the platform is set. Now get ready for the day of expansion. You say, God, how, where, how, money, what, who, people. God says, let me think about that. You take care of the vision that I've given you and just begin to go and plan. I want you to work as if money is of no object. Things you need, it's like it's no problem. You say, Lord, you're going to have to sort that out for us. But we're going to proceed with the vision. And we're going to win millions of people. Can you believe that? God can give you millions of souls literally in your life if you can ask him for them lift your hands right now i pray over some people are going to be touched with evangelistic fire you're going to get touched to become a soul winner a great winner of souls a, a great person of compassion for the lost uh, you're going to weep you're going to cry you're going to say hey how could how could uh, I, I allow these people to be lost uh, the Lord says, I'm going to use you and you're going to be my mouthpiece of my vessel, says the Spirit of the Lord. I prophesy according to Amos 3 and 7, where God says, surely I do nothing except I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet, and I speak through him. And now things are going to begin to happen. Prophetic prayer is declaration over things, and I'm declaring right now over you that you're going to begin to see God's favor. Lift your hands. Don't just be thinking about your struggles and your need. Think about advancing the kingdom. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Ephesians 3.20 said, I'll do above and beyond what you can even ask or think. I'll give you. Now, Psalm 2 verse 8, Ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen and the nations for your own inheritance. Jer uh, Isaiah said in Isaiah 6 when God says, who will go for us? He said, here am I, send me. Ezekiel 22, 30, God said, I looked for one to stand in the gap, but I found no one. But the Lord says, can I find a vessel in you? Can I use you? Can I use you? Lift your hands and say yes to God right now. There's a transaction happening in these few moments. I don't have time to get further into it, but I just, this is great. Just for a few moments right now, lift your hands. There's a transaction happening. I'll have to come back another time. But this, this a, I have so much that I've, I've not gotten to. But the Lord says, I am anointing people for the work of evangelism to go out into the harvest fields and get the lost at every cost. And the Lord says, do you want to be blessed in your life? You want to be favored in your life? Get about my business. Get into my business. Jesus even said when he was only 12 years old, he told his mom what she was looking for them. him. He was away somewhere and they couldn't find him. He said, what? Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? You should know this, son. He, he was from a young boy. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. The book of John said, the epistle of John said, to destroy the works of the devil. And the scripture said in Acts 10.38. Use your prayer language right now and just lift your hands and say hallelujah. If you don't speak in tongues yet, it's okay. You can get a hold of that. You can God can touch you. Father, thank you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. But what about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil? For God was with him. God says, I want to use you. Remember Jesus said in John 14.12. I go to the Father, so now greater works you will do. Not greater in quality. No one could do a better quality work than Jesus did. That's not possible. What he meant was in quantity, because now we have television, we have technology, we have, we have satellite, we have radio, we have internet, we have media, we have airplanes. They didn't fly anywhere. Jesus only went 200 miles around in the place where he was in Israel. He couldn't go other places. But we can go to the ends of the earth. Lift your hands. 
So greater works will you do because I've gone to the Father. And Jesus said, I stand to make intercession for you that she could fulfill his will. Lift your hands right now. Father, anoint him. I want people real quick, if you're a, if you want to be an evangelist, you want to be a soul winner, you'd like to be a soul winner, you'd like God to touch you, come to the altar real quick, just two seconds, just, just run up here and stand here at the point of contact. I just want you to walk up here, right? Just walk up to the altar right now. You say, Lord, I want you to use me in the ministry. Come stand here right now, just for a second. Come stand here quickly, 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 quickly. I, I'm going to drop the mic in 30 seconds. I just want you, I want, God wants to see that you're walking toward him. That's all this is about. Lift your hands up right now. Father, I don't have time to pray for everybody. Fire upon them. I'm going to pray one prayer. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit them. Raise them up. Thank you for your bishop here. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for your apostle. We thank you, Lord, for the grace of God that's going to just uh, expand this work. And the Lord says, son, all the workers you need, many of them are already in the house. And God says, I'm going to begin to really anoint people with fire. Father, those that you call sovereignly, let them be activated into the work of being a soul winner. A minister of the gospel. Yes, dear, the power of God's voice. Parashakara teleshetes. Shalatayah. Amen. So much, so much is happening. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your direction. Thank you for your favor. Hallelujah. Bishop, God's moving in. All right. I love you. Stay here a minute. Who's coming next? Who's coming up? The presence of the Lord is moving here right now. Let the Lord touch you. Let him touch you right now. Yes, Lord. Can you feel the presence of God? Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Don't clap. Just, just stay right here. The visitation of God is here. Archbishop is coming next. The Lord bless you. I'm an honor. I'm an honor to be here to speak the word of the Lord to all of you. God bless you very much. Let us put our hearts together as we sit down to that community. Let us put our hands together. Let us continue appreciating him. He has spoken to our nation. He has spoken for our lives. He has raised ministers to go and win souls for Christ. Let us continue appreciating him. As choir prepares. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, yeah.